Hello pandas and other scrap enthusiasts. Today we are trying something a little different and we are going to look at other scrappers around the world. And these are the kinds of videos that uh, catch my attention and I tend to get lost in when I'm bored. And uh, hey, this type of content works for other channels so uh, we'll give it a shot. Truth is I've got other projects I'm trying to get done so uh, this one will have to do and I think it's interesting. This is, of course, not going to be an exhaustive list of all of the other scrappers you can find on the internet. There are people like Ultimate Recycler and Vandal Vlogs over in the UK, among many others, I'm sure, and plenty of people in Australia. This is not going to cover all of them, but if you, uh, but definitely check their channels out as well. Uh, this is more um, extreme examples of uh, different international scrap collecting. So to kick things off, here's a unique way to recover gold. Alright, those are some classy looking shears. I'm into those. So same kind of e-waste we'll find anywhere. Decent collection though. Okay, so they've made a little dish in the sand. They're building a fire over it. He's got a, a blower going on. Looks like he's just building a fire directly over the, the pins. I think that's a chunk of lead? Yeah, it's all dripping down into there. That's definitely lead. Huh. I actually have heard of this. Somebody's bought some lead from me before and that's what he was telling me. Um, that he uses it to purify gold. I don't quite understand uh, the method there. Yeah, I don't really understand the uh, intricacies of how that works, but I guess it works. I know I've seen uh, Mount Baker Mining and Metals. He'll do, um, uh, that's, he'll use lead in cupelling. Now I imagine he's pulling off the slag? Does that even count as slag? I'm not sure what he's doing here. Yeah, no, he's definitely just skimming it off the top. Oh, you know what? That's probably not the slag. Is lead denser than gold? Okay, so no, I think the gold is in the lead and all of the top uh, skimmings was just the, um, the various bits of base metal and junk. But what then? Like, there's zero chance that's just all gold. There was nowhere near that much. Okay, so he's got it cleaned up, he's got the slag off, it's all washed, but it definitely looks more copper than gold. Oh, okay, now it's the acid bath. You can't... There's just no way around it. <laughs> you always end up dissolving in acid. And what is this? That's a big vat. It's a... a gigantic vat of acid. Okay, it, yeah. <sighs> okay, so this is not a, uh, a cheaper or easier way to do it. That's a giant bucket of nitric acid. And he's just boiling it with the sandals on and no gloves. Okay, these guys are... Um, well, I'm not here to judge. I'm not sure what good the water does. Just manhandling that boiling nitric. Alright. That's insane. He's basically just panning it off. I guess he didn't dissolve the gold. He just used a, um... He just dissolved everything but the gold. Oh, that's probably the point of the lead. Same as when you're, uh, cupelling. I guess the lead will bind to everything except the gold. It seems to have worked, and then he's just got his uh, DIY foundry. And voila! Got a little lump of gold. Okay, that... I guess it's a little bit easier. Like, what, what did that save him? Uh, it cost some lead, but it it did make it a lot easier to remove the um, all of the base metals and such. Maybe that is the way. Cool. <laughs> That's another way to do it. 
This is some scrap metal man in Ghana. Huh, early morning, that's for sure. Oh, they got like a whole operation. Heavy duty cart though, I like that. I'm sure they'd be even happier to use a truck or something, but you get by with what you have. Like an auto shop or something. Okay, so it looks like they've got an arranged meeting. Okay, well, I don't know where this transmission came from, but uh, they're haggling on it. See, that, that kind of makes sense. I mean, I don't usually find those just laying around for free. Um, I, sometimes I do. Uh, but I'm not surprised uh, these fellows won't just give it away. Hmm. I don't understand why he didn't just have his cart closer. I also don't understand why he's buying scrap off of a scrap cart um, to put on his scrap cart. Okay, and now he's just... two batteries have appeared. I don't quite understand um, why there's men with scrap carts selling scrap to other men with scrap carts. Okay, he's making deals on the phone. He's either got an upline or somebody who's like uh, setting the price or pre-arranged this pickup or something like that. Like I get the impression these guys are uh, delivery men. We found a couple little pieces here and there. Alright, they found a TV and a couple little bits and pieces as well. Well, they didn't find it. It... it I'm not sure what the details of uh, these business arrangements are, but it definitely looks like they're not just finding stuff everywhere. People know there's, there's value and that somebody wants the value, and I guess when your TV craps out on you, uh, you just hit up the, the scrap cart as it's going by and sell it to them for however much you can get. But do they fix it? Do they tear it apart for copper? I'm not sure. Okay, looks like they found their way to the parts mart and uh, this guy is making a deal on those batteries now. I think a lot of work. They're doing a lot of uh, running around, collecting, and then uh, they're bartering everything. Um, but how much are they actually making for all their trouble? Now we're over at, I guess, the version of a scrapyard or a, the parts yard or whatever. And this guy... They thought this guy was going to give him the, uh, the best price on the transmission, but he's being... Oh, he's being cheap about it. Yeah, they've been hanging on to it all day and refusing sales, thinking they'd get the best price from him. <laughs> and now he's stringing them out over five, uh, uh, I don't know, GHS, uh, gonna, I'll have to look that up. Um, <laughs> literally nickel and diming him. Yeah, but how much? All that walking around. Oh, he took the TV too. Okay, so this this is the full. Uh, they they were trying to get the best price from the guy that was going to buy all of it, not just the good piece. That's fair enough. I would do the same. And he goes back home to his uh, chalet. I want to know how much he made. Those some rickety R stairs, but let me try and figure out how much this guy made. Okay, my math must be off, but it looks like they lost money by my calculations. They got the batteries for 90 and then they sold them for 100. But they were like 120 uh, plus another, they were 130 in on the rest of the stuff they had and, and he's given them 
a hundred. It looks like they ran around all day to lose 20 uh, coins. Well, I don't know what the... That looks like a hard business. Wow. And then we got this little short one. Um, I These ones always come up and uh, I don't know where they're getting this material. This is undersea cable uh, being stripped. Oh, it's getting cold. Okay, that was a nice, nice little chunk of copper. And then this is, um, it's not granulating, it's just a crusher. I guess that's one way. Yeah, when uh, sometimes the insulation is all like sticky and, and like doesn't want to come off. This makes way more sense than trying to pick it off by hand. I don't understand why this one's all sealed off on the end. It's got thick copper shielding on there too. Okay, there we go. That is some beautiful looking copper. That's a nice stash. I don't know uh, how I would do that by hand. I would love to get a hold of a bunch of that stuff, but I, nobody throws that out. Um, that is definitely a, a very specialized kind of product and a very specialized kind of waste. Even if I did get it, I, I don't know how I would take it apart without one of those machines. So maybe it's best that uh, they just they just get a hold of it. Good for them though. And this one's actually from a, a much more popular channel. This is Survival Russia. <laughs> just cruising in his tank. <laughs> a little bit of a funky find. A lot of wire heavy duty wire there's a lot there actually yeah, he's full on digging it out of uh, a field it's, never been it's all overgrown and covered in dirt still has its label but uh, found some kind of steel cable and then whatever this thing is what seemed to start out as a as a not awesome day oh he's metal detecting to find it that makes it's sense i wouldn't find day. anything in there it's actually not that bad oh wow is that like a like a tank tread or something? It's about six o'clock in the morning. My body arrived with the car, so uh, <laughs> this is what we loaded so far. It's about two tons there, I guess, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna save some of the good I stuff. That makes for, sense. Uh, we're gonna build an oven. Gonna get and do a little bit of filming here. That's basically the operation. Anyway, how much did we get? We got about, uh, I got about $900, a little bit more than $900. Actually. $900? Is that like dollars, dollars? Because, uh, I don't understand the prices he's talking about. He said he got $900. Uh, he also said there was uh, somebody else that he's splitting it with, and it's, it's 22,500 rubles per ton as of two years ago for steel. Did he, t did he make 900 rubles or 900 dollars? I don't know. And it was a nice looking haul and a nice looking vehicle. Alright, it's getting real cold out here but I got a couple more. I don't know why I didn't do this inside. Probably because of the... I like the atmosphere. So this is one that somebody sent to me. Um, Rust Collectors in Indonesia. Detri uses a magnetic stick to find the metal. Oh, it's like magnet fishing. Paling parah kalau lagi licin, banyak oli, lumpur, jalannya susah. Aku takut takut terpleset. The women are only allowed to collect small pieces like these. The larger chunks belong to the ship owners to sell or reuse. Oh, she's got to break them up and make them small because scavengers aren't allowed to take any larger pieces because it's a ship breaking yard. Oh, 
So these ladies are literally collecting flakes of rust that fall the off of the metal ships. Near the ships. On a really good day, she collects as much as 200 kilograms and sells it for almost $3. 200 kilograms. Really? For three bucks? Okay, so she sells it to a uh, amalgamator with a cart, and I guess he's making money as well. So that's part of the reason why she's not making much. Huh. Three dollars a day. I got another one from these guys. Now, I don't love this channel. I'll explain why. So this one is um, scrapping explosives in Afghanistan. Okay, it doesn't really show him collecting anything. Um, I assume he collected them, but all right. Then he's got his own little sorting yard. These are bases. Oh, those are like aluminum fin. Those fins are probably aluminum. Shows that they belong to the Soviet Army. Just a hammer and a chisel to get uh, copper out of there. Sell it for about two dollars a pound. I'm not sure what kind of weapon that would have been that has a motor like that. Um, decades of rust. I have mixed feelings like about this channel. Um, oh, and he's collected a whole bunch of um, projectile rounds. Those are bags of plastic. Okay, I, I guess he's recycling plastic as well. Oh, yeah. So he gets to sell to a scrapyard that buys um, rubber and plastic as well. So I guess there's lots of stuff that he can pick up. Collectors like Salim sometimes bring their scrap here. Does it say how much he makes though? They can get just over three dollars for about fifteen pounds. Then it's transported. Just over three dollars for fifteen pounds. Since fuel costs are rising, they try to load up as much as possible. These numbers are really hard to make any sense of because this is this video and this channel in general is not really for. Um, uh, for people who are interested in the the breakdown of how much you can make doing this and that they're, they're super broad terms and Honestly, this channel is what I would call uh, poverty porn that is tragic um, But it leaves me questioning the validity of this channel since it's you know getting millions of views on these videos And it seems a little exploitative to me um, but the fact remains that there are, like, young people, um, earning a living by scrapping these things, so that is intense. This one's a teenager in India, uh, digging through e-waste and scrapping cell phones. Yeah, that's where your e-waste ends up. Giant heaps of bags and uh, kids like this are um, all searching for old picking through them and, and video game controllers. trying to pull out s circuit boards that have a little Those bit of gold and a little bit so of copper on them. I guess this is why Indian parents are so focused on making sure their kids get an education because if you don't get an education, you end up doing this. Now, Aline breaks down up to 150 of these phones every day. Usually, Aline can collect up to 11 pounds of mixed scrap, which he sells for $6 a day to a middleman. Uh, yeah, 11 pounds of mixed scrap, and he sells for $6 a day. I'm assuming this is an American company making this channel, and they're talking about American dollars. Well, that's where all our e-waste ends up. Fantastic. Now, I am not seeking to make a commentary on uh, that, or waste, or recycling. I guess what I'm pulling from this is uh, so much to be thankful for. I live... well, I don't want to compare. They look happy. You know, they... This kid is smiling, he's clearly enjoying spending time with his friends. It sucks that he's uh, spending this time uh, working, picking through trash for a living, but... Uh, my only thought really is I wish he was making more, um, because in in this area, 
we're able to do okay picking through the trash. Um, so I, I can relate to what motivates him to do that. I just wish he was making more than six bucks a day. Uh, dang. And then the last one I've got for you, um, I forget who shared this one with me, uh, but this is actually a YouTuber uh, from Kazakhstan. His uh, channel is called Looking for Treasure, and I'll put a link down below because uh, I think what he's doing, I just... I really enjoy watching this guy. I mean, it's his channel, uh, and it seems like most of the stuff that he finds, uh, he just, he goes to this landfill and uh, picks through and grabs whatever small pieces he can, and um, he loads his bike up with all kinds of stuff that I would pass by. Is he gonna pick that up, or? Yeah, so, uh, here's a TV. It looks like somebody has been there before him and already grabbed um, what they deem to be the good parts. But this guy, I've watched a bunch of his videos, and he'll, he'll save everything. Like, I think now um, there are... F he'll leave some pieces behind here and there, but, uh, yeah, just tiny little bits and pieces. It all adds up. I'm just amazed at his... Um, uh, just his willingness to grab every little bit. Uh, now my understanding is, uh, so this is not his job. This is a hobby. He's got something else that he does, and this is just something he does for, f not just for fun. He's saving up to buy a car. So, uh, uh that's a good piece right there. Uh, that's kind of something I wanted to share, because I think it would be so funny if... Oh, he's got an oil filter, too? Oh, no, he, uh, maybe he's not keeping that. Or maybe he just hucked it to get the, the dirt out and he'll go grab it. A little bit of steel or aluminum. One of them. Aluminum. Yeah, no, this guy's a hard worker. And, uh, and I love watching him take the stuff home and pick all of the little, oh, the nice. little bits out and the, watching the collection right. slowly grow. Um, I think he's doing great. Uh, and Come here's on. the thing. I... I really wanted to share this because he's working hard. He's putting out uh, videos. He's at 500 subscribers, and I think it would be hilarious if he woke up the next day, checked his channel, and had like two or three times that many. So I'm asking you to help me um, just confuse this poor fellow. Go to his channel, follow the link, hit the subscribe button, um, don't, don't tell him who sent you or anything like that. It's, it's nothing to do with that. I just think we can get him to a thousand subscribers, like easy mode. So like he doesn't know I exist. He's not asking for this, but, um, I think it'd be great. Do it as a favor to me. Just go over there, click the subscribe button. Um, check out a few of his videos. I think you'll see what I've been enjoying. It's, I don't know how, uh, poor... Kazakhstan really is. I, I'm not going to assume anything. It looks like a beautiful country. Um, anyway, go check out his channel. Hit subscribe. Come on. It'll be funny. Uh, and that is uh, us reacting to uh, scrappers from around the world. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. And if nothing else, it's, uh, it's, a, it's good to look around and see how other people are living. Even if we're not doing amazing, there's still so much to be thankful for, and uh, I think remembering that from time to time is um, helps us be a little more uh, caring, a little more generous, and a little warmer to the people that we get to have in our lives. So um, hopefully that's what you can take from this, because that's how I feel when I see stuff like this. I would love to help all of them, um, but we just got to do our best to help our our little corner of the world, wherever we are. So thank you for joining me. Uh, something a little more adventurous or uh, explorative next week, I'm sure. Uh, but it's always nice to have you here. So I'll see you on the next one. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.